off. So welcome back to my channel. So welcome to my office. You're in my little office, which used to be our game room. So I think I might have to redesign this this year. That might be, I need to go and put it on my goals because it is a mix mash of stuff from a jukebox, which that probably will stay but I think I wanna change it up a bit. But, so welcome to the office. And I also want to say, I've already started to enjoy some of the change of 2021. I went and went to my hairstylist last week and she did balayage. She painted my hair with um, dark. I'm, I'm actually a brunette, so, and I had been quite blonde for five years uh, with different haircuts and versions of the blonde but um, this is the first time I've actually gone dark. So, um, but I love it. I love, I love a change and I think of my hair as an accessory. So I'm quite excited to already kind of wanting to turn the page on the pandemic and it's not going away, but uh, change is in the air. Early in the year, I love to catch up on on fashion, what's happening, what will the trends be, what are the things that I think that I want to participate in. And I've loved fashion for my entire life. I have was influenced by my mom and my sister who have great fashion sense. And also I was subscribed as a young girl to Mademoiselle and then Elle magazine. And I've just lived a life of loving fashion and participating in trends, but not to a fault. I think some women, girls, boys, men can be influenced too much. I think you always have to take trends and spin them in a way that makes sense for you and your life. And it's it's fun. It, I've always seen myself when I dress in the morning as, as a clean slate. It's just a creative outlet. It's always been an outlet for me from the way I do my hair to my maybe my frame of my glasses or sunglasses to scarves, hats, and I've just always enjoyed it. And I'm excited to go through some of the trends with you and pick out some do's and some don'ts. But I also want to address the fact that I feel that fashion is not for, you know, women under the age of 35. These trends transcend themselves into the an interior design industry. I think that fashion influences, influences all aspects of life and including paint colors. And I think uh, Meryl Streep said it best in Devil Wears Prada. Where are the belts for this oh. dress? Why is no one ready? Here, it's a tough call. They're so different. Mm. <laughs> Something funny? No. No, 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 nothing's, you know, it's just the, both those belts look exactly the same to me, you know, I'm still learning about this stuff and, uh... <laughs> this stuff? Oh, okay, I see. You think this has nothing to do with you. You go to your closet and you select, I don't know, that lumpy blue sweater, for instance, because you're trying to tell the world that you take yourself too seriously to care about what you put on your back, but what you don't know is that that sweater is not just blue, it's not turquoise, it's not lapis, it's actually cerulean. And you're also blithely unaware of the fact that in 2002, Oscar de la Renta did a collection of cerulean gowns, and then I think it was Yves Saint Laurent, wasn't it, who showed Cerulean military jackets. I think we need a jacket here. Mm. And then Cerulean quickly showed up in the collections of eight different designers. And then it uh, filtered down through the department stores and then trickled on down into some tragic casual corner where you no doubt fished it out of some clearance bin. However, that blue represents millions of dollars and countless jobs. And it's sort of comical how you think that you've made a choice that exempts you from the fashion industry when in fact you're wearing a sweater that was selected for you by the people in this room.
from a pile of stuff. Let's kick it off by reviewing the trends of 2021. I'm gonna look at my computers while we're talking because I've written notes. As I said, I watched a ton of different fashion shows for spring 2021, read some editorials, and I'm ready to tell you what I have summarized for the trends and what I predict as being the strong trends of 2021. There, there is a beautiful set of colors and they range from a really dark forest green to into the teals and through to the mangoes and then off to the yellows. And that's a beautiful palette for most skin types. You can eat from blondes to brunettes. I would say it kind of favors the brunette um, group. Those colors with olive skin and dark skin tones that's that's quite a nice palette those colors are really transcending quickly into the the home interiors there's a lot of people that have jumped on painting the dark greens i've seen amazing beautiful kitchen cabinetry in the greens in fact i think ikea has a beautiful uh green dark green kitchen the other strong palette coming especially for spring is of course pastels are always a thing of spring it's of blossom flowers and easter but this year it is more of a sorbet and it's more of a romantic soft muted uh, set of, of pastels so pretty and again i think a lot of people can pull off a soft pastel the other colors the other few colors that are really strong is the bright pink the fuchsia um, that is a, a really strong i think we saw it on uh, chanel did a lot of chanel did very uh, a really strong black and white game and then they have like shots of pink and dark pink and light pink the other basic basic neutral that's strong is camel which i love i love i love it with black and i think here you'll see a camel coat you can go the classic but i also really love this kind of boyfriend jacket sluffy um, off the shoulders um, i think that's beautiful and again, I don't think that you need to be 27 or 35 to wear any of these fashions. Okay, so that was color. Now we're going to look at more just full on trends of shape and uh, styles. Thanks to the pandemic, we are looking at loungewear. Loungewear is coming on strong because I don't think we want to let it go, quite honestly. We've been all sitting around in in uh, yoga pants and and loungewear for a year now coming up so i think we're hard pressed to want to let that one go from prada to lisa yang we have a lot of knit loungewear and certainly that the bralettes are super strong now there is a trend that is probably under the age of mm, 27 <laughs> the bralette although katie holmes made a bralette picture go viral and she's in her late 30s and not saying that you can't you can um, but I just don't know about it I they're more of a long like little, tight little shorty tank top almost so now on to silhouettes and fitting for fashion what I love to see is the high waist is still uh, a strong influence throughout uh, the seasons for 2021 a lot of high-waisted pants with the cinched belt and gather um, nice fitting high-waisted jeans and what I loved about um, the legs on the pants is loose fit even to wide leg is really a strong trend and I love a wide legged trouser it's so classic especially when you pair it with a monochromatic look. The silhouette is really, really, the influence is kind of 1940s. The small waist belts with the full skirts or A-line skirts. 
Another strong trend this year is the sweater vest and the cape, which again, both excite me because I, I love a vest and I own a few capes and, and blazers that are cape in the back or dresses. I think that they're so flattering for one and they are such a statement. The sweater vest is invented in a few different ways with the long, long opening on the side to the traditional sweater vest that you think of. I think it's, it's the sweater vest is really, again, like the cape, it really it takes your outfit up a notch because I don't think a lot of people grab for a vest. So the boyfriend coat is, is again strong this year, a little bit more, um, maybe 80s inspired with the padded shoulder pads. And I have to say that there's really hit and miss with boyfriend jacket. Is the boyfriend jacket just looked like an old coat that somebody has put on you went to your grandpa's closet and you put on this this they were so ill-fitting and so they did they did not look good at all what i've seen so far is that the boyfriend coat is with the add of the padded shoulder and then something cinched around your waist it, it at least gives some shape and i guess that's what i didn't like when i saw boyfriend coats of the past with a few, even if you are not a sewer, even if you get a boyfriend coat, or even if you shop vintage and look for an old, older men's suits that are that you can have cleaned, um, it's very easy to do a nip and a tuck on an on an old a vintage jacket and make a jacket look a little bit more fitted, even if you want it to look oversized. So accessories. Let's look at um, so the mask, the mask because we still are wearing masks. Uh, the black face mask is the trend piece. And I think I like the black mask because it doesn't take away from your outfit. Although I could see a, a sorbet color, powder pinks being pretty, or a floral being kind of nice and adding to your outfit. And now what I am excited about is the headscarf. I have a lot of different scarves. And wearing a headscarf like a babushka um, you know, you tied like this, like uh, Audrey Hepburn of the past. And because there's so many ways to wear headscarves, I think are so flattering. And I kind of almost see the, you know, the twisty headband time of 2020. I see that that transitions out and it is now the headscarf. The other very strong trend this year, as it was last year, is denim, mixed denim, denim on denim, patchwork. Patchwork is very strong by some of the fashion houses, like I believe it was Dolce & Gabbana. Here's a trend that I don't think transcends across generations, and that's the patchwork. Even the denim on denim, mm, I don't know. Okay, there are some trends. Let's have the fashion don'ts. Okay, even if trends are in style, please, please, let's not wear fur sandals. Okay, I mean it. If I see anybody with fur sandals or slides and socks, no, no. Mm -mm. Don't laugh. They are some kind of ugly. They're fugly. <laughs> Fluffy slides. Or, or the giant Tiva with the rope on the edge. No. This is not going to go. Come on, people. Let's get. And I understand that sometimes fashion houses will over exaggerate for runway or editorial um, spreads on Cosmo or Vogue but these are ugly. Same with those giant runners from the 80s that are reinvented. Um, I just can't do it. I can, I love a, what the white runner look, um, but I will not, not dad's Kirkland runners, no, I'm sorry. This does not make an outfit cuter. And I think your shoe should elevate your outfit, not pull it down. <laughs> They are ugly. Don't do it. Um, and lastly, the knee-high wide boots. It's a tough one to pull off. I really think that fashion accessorizing is all about um, a certain attitude. 
but there are some things that I just think that you regret and it might be the fluff, fluffy furry slides for sure but also the knee-high white boot I'm just not digging it I even remember the white boot when it was in style decades ago and I wore it and I regret that I think though that you there's so many other cute ways of pulling off this trend without buying into it I think a cute white sock and a sandal or you know the lacy white sock or some of those sock boots that are white so remember fashion is all about attitude uh, go out every you know spring and fall I usually do buy something that is on trend pretty sure that I will buy something yellow and something dark green and it might be a purse it might be a blouse maybe a blazer I'm thinking um, and and usually I want to get a couple of seasons out of it so um, keep those in mind and have fun with styling fashion is supposed to be fun you're a canvas and you're going to get dressed because we're getting out of this pandemic and we're getting out of our houses and boy oh boy when we get out we're going to uh, strut our stuff so I hope you've enjoyed my trends of 2021 thanks everybody see you next week